Hello, everyone. My name is Carlos Macaneta, and um, I'm an Android developer at Salt Digitis. And today I'll be presenting uh, about the education app for with DHS2, which is called a semi scripture app. Uh, for, for this presentation, I've prepared uh, uh, some some introduction. I will be introducing you what is semis. I will tell you about the features and the challenge that we have faced during the the, the de development and implementation of this the the this app. Uh, starting with uh, EMISH. EMISH stands for Education Management System. Uh, this the, 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 this app was designed with DHS2 platform. Uh, and this app has been implemented um, to, to, to many countries uh, that we consider East at all. And this, uh, this, this, this app aims to, to collect and uh, to collect, store, and report data from, from each individual person. Uh, the implementation of, of the system uh, will allow the, the, the users to collect the, the data, improve the ways and uh, improve the way and the, the, the data, improve the way how the data is collected and managed by each country which is using AMIS for education. Uh, in this way, this can help the, 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 the way the, 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 the information is managed by by the by each country about the education, giving more reports and aggregated data for each student, uh, I can say. Um, I think so, you need to share your screen still. Oh, sorry, I thought that I was already sharing. Uh, no worries, no worries. This is a good uh, introduction, anyway. So. <laughs> I'll be sharing. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I will let. As I said before, uh, I was saying that EMIS uh, stands for Education Management Information System, which uses the HS2 platform, and the and it has been implemented at several in several countries, ISPs, and uh, the this application aims to. in order to improve information systems, management system, management information for taking decisions about the collected data. Uh, the implementation of this system uh, will allow the, 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 the information to be collected and improve data uh, about the, the education uh, about education in a certain country, for instance, uh, the, this 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 information will will be aggregated or be reported. How how the 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 information were collected to to improve the management of data in each country and that countries that has implemented EMIS. So. Uh, you, you you can be there asking yourselves what uh, is EMIS uh, EMIS. Uh, in the other hand, EMIS EMIS is an extension of DHS two. Uh, as we already know, DHS two is used for health sector, but DHS two has decided to extend uh, to education system two, and they uh, will be able to collect analysis, analysis and visualize individual data and aggregated data for ed educational in uh, institutions. Uh, as you can see, the several countries has already implemented THS2 for education, uh, such as Uganda, Uganda, Gambia, Esotin, Togo, Mozambique, and Sri Lanka. Uh, Talking about the, the, the app features, I'll be introducing you how you can install. I will 
In the source code, we'll talk about the architecture uh, uh, folder structure, package structure, uh, how we can set up this uh, the environment of EMS, and uh, we'll, we'll have a little demonstration. Uh, talking about the, the source code at all, the, the, the source code can be found in the GitHub. We have created the, the we have forked a DHS2 core capture app uh, repository, and we have created a module into the, the, the core to implement EMIS. So the EMIS is already integrated mm -hmm. with the capture app. And we have the, the link that we can share with you to, to download the, the I mean the 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 repository and the code and you can also see how it was developed and how it is structured. So uh as I was saying. Uh, EMS was created as a module. Uh, DHS2 capture app already has modules different. So we can uh, say we have, for instance, uh, stock use cases, commons, form. Uh, they are all modules, and the EMS work, works as a module. It It's not a standalone app, but it works together with the of the things that we have uh, been thinking as a benefit to create EMS as a module, it was about the scalability and reusability of the, the app. Once we use the, the, the EMS as a module, we can be reusing some components that we have created because we have created uh, components that uh, can be reused uh, to other projects. We can say to let's suppose we have another project that we want to reuse some components that are located in use case or AMIS, it's possible to take it and reuse to in another module. Uh, <clears throat> as I was saying, I was already listening the benefits of EMS as a module. It uh, we have Uh, uh, talking about the architecture, we we have implemented MVVM architecture to develop uh, the, this this application. Uh, one of the things that made us implement or choose this architecture. Uh, it is because uh, this facilitates the implementation of testing. If we want to implement unit testing or another kind of testing, it's easy to implement testing with MVVM and it's easy to maintain. MVVM also has the well-structured and defined structure that can uh, facilitate the, the, the devs or the users navigate into the navigate into each package to interact with or to or to take a look about the code then they can uh, contribute with their opinion ideas etc About the libraries that we have used, we have we didn't use a lot of them. We have used uh, the popular DHS two to collect individual data. Uh, we we use DHS two in the background to has our database, and we can take this data to and we can implement the, the same. The same uh, structure that we have with uh, the the core app, uh, the synchronization, the the upload, etc. That's why we we use HS two SDK, and we have Hilt for dependency injection, JSON, which is for JSON 
parser and we have data store to store user preferences. Uh, we have uh, a setup, a future setup. A future setup is something that we need to do before uh, before using the, the, the mobile app. We can configure our programs, we can create our programs, etc. but we need to do extra configuration uh, to, to make it work. Uh, this extra configuration is used using the AMS configuration application. This application uh, builds a, uh, a configuration model that we have created to, to make the, the app dynamic for some purposes, uh, as we can say, the, the filters management, for instance, line listing, and some programs that we want to have some extra configuration with, uh, with them. So we have this application that uh, makes us config configure this metadata that can be used in AMIS. It's mandatory to make this configuration because if we don't, we won't be able to use the app uh, properly. Here, I'm going to show you uh, how the, the app looks like. As you can see, we have here the, the illustration of the UIs. I have here the splash and the login is still the same as we have with the core app. And the, the login and the synchronization are the same. And the programs view here, the, the home view, we have already the, the same view, but it changes when we choose the, the, the student program for this. A different interface for for attendance. So for attendance, we have this interface, which uh, we need to select or apply the, the filters. So we select uh, the filters we want. We have the period of academic year. We have the the school. We have the grade and the section or class. Once this filter. And we have a, a a summary of how many students we have for this for this uh, grade and and class. After that, we will face this uh, attendance and attendance view. We will face this in interface, which the user can update the the attendance status. Attendance status, as you can see in this side, we have three different status. Uh, those status. Uh, after this, uh, I'll be showing you how uh, how how it it works. Uh, I'll be demonstrating you how we can, for instance, set up the 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 the, the process of setup of the the data store configuration that we need in the app, and then I will show you how we can use the, the app, I will show, I'll be showing you the, the mobile application. Okay, uh, as I said, EMIS configuration uh, is an application that was uh, Here we have the EMIS configuration. If we select this, we will open the, the, the application. For instance, we already have, have some 
configurations made here. If we go to details, we can see that we have the attendance. This this uh, mockup, this mobile mockup that we have here illustrates the 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 program. If so, we select the program. It illustrates the configurations that we do here. If we apply apply filters, it will don't scroll this the, the this background. It will show the 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 background with the filters applied. Or if we configure line listing, it will show the line listing. It will be illustrating the the line listing in this view. Uh, I'll do a demo of how it works. For instance, uh, I have a program. I can say stop. For instance. Uh, let's save. Uh, for filters, I will create uh, one filter for it is organization unit, and we set the level of this organization unit. Say great for instance, it can be section. Uh, attendance, for instance. Okay. Okay. Once we once we 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 create this configuration, uh, we will see a uh, this display in this section. For instance, for for the programs as we. So before we will have the that view with the with this these details I, I will show you. For instance, we have these details right here with the line listing and the, the programs in the setup. It, we will have this interface. All as the once we create the program filters or time missing. This is to guide us how we can show how this will. In, for instance, if we click the field, uh, we have school and class created. So they, they basically it illustrates what we we chose in this configuration. This configuration, once we create this configuration, we can start in introducing our credentials in the app. download and uh, all will be set up. So now I'll be showing you how it works in, in the mobile side. In mobile side, I've already jumped the process of login, etc. I'll be showing you directly how, how to take attendance for each student. To take attendance, we will, we will have this interface. Uh, we have the program. Once we select the program, the program, we will have the periods uh, pre-selected pre the period of the current year, or we can choose our according according to our needs. So we have this school uh, tree. This school tree loads loads the the all the schools that are enrolled to this user. That's why. While we're still waiting to this, uh, this is one of the fields that we have to apply, and then we will follow to grades and sections which we apply and we get the list of, of students. Okay, we can also search uh, our web. Um, 
I'll be selecting the grades and section. Oh, uh, section. Okay. Well, as we uh, once we select the once we apply the the required fillers, all all fields are required. We get this the list of students. After getting this list, we press attendance to take attendance. As you can see in here in the top bar, we have the current in the calendar. We will uh, set the 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 attendance for the current date. We can test something like uh, select another day, for instance, Tuesday, mm -hmm. and the status is updated according to each date. I will this green check we have uh, present for this block in orange we have late and for this we have for this cross red cross we have we have uh absent i will simulate for absent Hub, when we select absent we have to select the result of, of absence have this the the status the attendance status taken before we save completely, we have to make sure that this summary is the is the attendance that, that, that we took before. When we take attendance we, and we try to, to save, we will have this, this, this summary will be launched to make the user confirm if he wants to save or cancel. Once he cancels, he, he, he completes, he, he will have this stats he will go back to this view and he will be able to see the stats if we change the date for instance for the current one you can see that the status is updated because we didn't take attendance of this current date or we can go to also update our stats as you can see the summary has been updated and we save and makam esmeralda now it's late. So this is the process of taking attendance uh, uh, for, for each student. Uh, now <laughs> I'll be keeping after the demo. Uh, we have faced some challenges right here. One of the challenges that we have faced was to integrate the EMIS into THS2 Capture App. Uh, integrate EMIS into Capture App was a big challenge because uh, we, we have tried uh, from ourselves just uh, import module because we have created this app standalone before it it was standalone and we created the app and we tried to import it as a as a module and we had a lot of issues which most of the, those issues was about the incompatibility of libraries and dependencies uh this app was created in jetpack compose and the the the, the version was <coughs> was ahead from the, the current app in the the oh, into the the DHS2 and we had problems to to associate to uh, to make Hilt collaborate with Dagger. As we know the DHS2 is using Dagger at all and we wanted to integrate the Hilt, etc. And we had those problems of dependencies uh bugs in the build with HP, et cetera. Uh, to solve those problems, to resolve those problems, we had to to uh, make make the the the, the terminals, uh, a little compatible with the core app. We we needed to downgrade some dependencies to make it work. 
and we start thinking we started thinking in a way to to not face this problem in the future if you, we want to create the a module into the HS2. And one of the solutions that we we found we uh, we had to to do that was create uh was do a, a fork we we made a fork in the HS2 capture app and then we created uh a simple uh module into the, this work. So creating a module it, it makes it makes easier for the easier to for the next times creating another module. It will be renaming only the, the, the module name and the packages to start another project in the future. In this way, the only thing that we need to do is, is only to uh, keep up, updating. Uh, once a week, once a month, we start updating only the, 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 our fork to make it, to make it uh, com compatible with the core app. Uh, that's it for, for now. That this is what we are facing, and now I would like to hear you, your questions, your doubts, ideas. Uh, but sorry, but before going to to question question questions, ideas, or or doubts, I would like to uh, dive into the code a little bit to to show you how how it e how it is structured. Sorry. Uh, going to the code, we have here the EMIS module, and we have the the, the structure of, of our code as as uh, I've shown before. In the, in the structure, we have data, DI, UI, and utils as our main as our main uh, as our main packages. For DI, we still we we just created to implement the dependency injection of the app and data. In the data package, we have the our app repositories, and we have our app module. And UI, we treat everything about UI, all the states of UI, view models, etc. And components folder that uh, is into UI package. This is uh, for generic generic components components that we have created created once to be reused in uh, another views that because we have some repeated components. So uh, I'll be showing you uh, as an example. We have attendance screen attendance screen uh, in the app that we have. Uh, Sorry, stands for this screen. This screen is a uh, attendance screen. So to build this screen, we we have created a generic component that we have metadata. Metadata item is this uh item that shows the information of the the student that showing the name and this code. So uh. What we have done here, we have implemented the, the, the actions. As you can see, we can here implement the actions or, or another, another field that we want. So I, we have only created this, 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 this item separated of the, the put on actions because we can set different actions in, in this component. In this case, we have created uh, attendance buttons. Attendance yeah. buttons. Uh, only the 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 buttons that we have used to to set the the status of attendance. So in this view, we have here the component the 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 component that we set up the 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 actions. The actions, as I said before, can be uh, present, absent. And late, so this is this is responsible of of doing of checking uh, which which uh, attendance state was selected, 
and which is the, the the status of each each one because we have here for instance the the colors we have the container color that can be that can change when the user uh, ma uh, makes makes a selection or he takes or for for user selections at all so uh this is responsible for that i can show you how we for instance in the code we have how we get attainers for instance uh here in our code we have user coroutines not the uh rx java for asynchronous we have user coroutines and we as you can see here we take the events for for each attendance we we do we are making a event we are doing a event it's it represents events in our model data so we load the data according to some information once all those information is the date the user has selected the program and the and we send the the list of those students we want to to get the, the attendance state basically for for attendance this is what we have uh for for this for this uh application thank you now i would like to hear your 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 inputs your doubts ideas and etc thank you Thank you, Carlos. It was a really good presentation. I like the app. Uh, some some nice responses in the chat as well. Um, there's a question that just came in, um, and I'll I'll read it. Um, that is, how can we make the app uh, for a new DHS2 instance with a lower DHS2 version and Android capture? And what's the effort required to complete that? Sorry, can you come again, please? Um, so it, it's also in the chat, so you can also read along. Uh, but how can we make the app for a new DHS2 instance with a lower DHS2 version and Android capture? And what's the effort required to complete? Uh, all right. Uh, for this, uh, to, to make this, uh lower we we uh for this for this version we have created uh the, the, this this uh this app for for uh, from dh2 2.2.8 uh, uh, i guess or seven uh, i don't remember at all but i think that we we can start using from from that is I think I don't I I don't know if we can downgrade the version to be using this, this app because we have started in a ver on a version that is uh higher. I, I I wouldn't be recommending to for instance to downgrade the 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 the, the version the app version to make it compatible with the DHS2 instance that is lower than two point seven or two point eight for instance. Okay. Um. Cool. Uh. Yeah. I mean, lower versions are generally not recommended if you can avoid it. So, uh, if it's a new instance, I would highly recommend just keeping it as high as possible. Um. And then, um, a question from Gasim. Uh, what role does the DSS two community of practice has uh, in the future of the app? And uh, uh, how helpful did you find the the COP during development? And anything in particular you would like to recommend to the community? uh i think that uh the 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 practice uh, the practice of using cot uh, i will say that was easy uh at all using jetpack compose we have used jetpack compose in this app so jetpack compose itself facilitates us to create cops or components that can be reused it now or in the future one of the things that we 
we do is try to uh, update the, the project, uh, the dependencies, for instance, to make it compatible with the newer versions, et cetera. So, the, the, so we, we don't need to be worried if the, the app will be compatible with the new dependencies or in the future or not. Basically, some of the components that we still have, have here that we have created can be turned in, into COP to be reused in another modules, for instance. So uh, we will be uh, developing in, in order to make it reusable, those components to be reused in other apps and making sure that each component that is created by us uh, can be reused and can, and can be man maintained as long as we develop the app, making sure that it's not incompatible with the older versions or newer versions. So we'll be using uh, stable like libraries to, to make it sure that it works uh, in the present, in the future, or even in the past. Awesome. Um, I, that wasn't exactly what I asked, but uh, or what was asked, but it was a good answer nonetheless. Um, but the question was about the community of practice, uh, which is also COP. I think it's uh, uh, that's part of the confusion. So if if this, the the community of practice has helped you in any way uh, the, while developing this app, um, and also how you um, uh, how you can use it in the future for this application. Uh, properly the, the question you you want to say how the the community can uh which is the role of community to to collaborate in the future is something was that or yeah the the community of practice so the our, our uh, the ats2 community uh that we have uh well, uh, about the the practicing uh, that we've been using, I think that uh, we have been uh, using practice of the the DHS uh, two corrupt. We had an experience before with them, and we try to follow the the same practices that that they that, that they have implemented in other projects. Uh, I think that can make it easy to the community uh, collaborate or, or get into uh, the app. I think, yes, we have been using the, the, the HS2 practices. Okay, great. Um, or, and then, yeah, so uh, Victor yeah. gave a clarification in the chat about lower as a DSCS2 versions, which is that the uh, Android SDK takes care of different versions. Um, so it can go up down to 2.30. So that's a uh, that's good clarification. Thank you, Victor. Um, let's see, are there any, any other questions? Uh, so I, I also have a question. And um, is this application currently used in, in, in production for, um, for a large group of people or is it uh, still a trial? Uh... This application uh, right now is being used uh, as a test and with a, a great amount of people they are using, but we didn't um, make uh, an official release, for instance, because they is being used as a test for for those people. They are still testing the app, and we are some getting we are getting some insights and inputs about what can be performing to to make it uh, public to release it. To, to everyone. Okay, great. And and are you looking for for more testers, or are you happy with the current test group? <laughs> I think that <laughs> it's great to to this create our amount of group because we have a lot of people testing uh, these apps, so we get great great feedback and we great. Uh, uh, we get great feedback to to improve and from this app. I think that's okay. 